Oh my God, so much to discuss. Uh, largest exploit ever, Oof. okay? This might be a $300 million exploit and it happened on a bridge. The bridge hack. Bridge hack, yeah. $300 million. Is it 300 million? I heard 250 to 300 million. Somewhere between 250 and 300, you know, depending on the price. A lot, okay. Um, I said 200 million this, but um, it was more. Mm -hmm. And um, this, I, maybe we'll start with kind of First a, off, a, that's big. That's very, very big. That's mm -hmm. a big number. That is the second biggest DeFi exploit of all time. Yes, it is. Yes, uh, millions. When you get in the hundreds of millions, that's that's very big territory. It's, very big. it's a it's nice big. bank heist, yes. man. <laughs> yes. Bank heists keep getting bigger. Uh, it's... Well, I'll start here with it's it's kind of a, a prediction that I feel like Bankless has has made and uh, not happy about this prediction, but like it felt like an inevitability in 2022. This is a tweet that uh, I put out earlier in January. Sad prediction. There will be some monster bridge hacks in 2022 that will make people question their multi layer one chain thesis. I feel like that's a little bit what happened, right? Multi-chain, multi-bridge. Really fast. It did, okay. And uh, then I probably doubled down on that prediction, which is again sad. Okay, sadly, this exploit is just the start, and I feel like that's the case too. Although, hopefully, everyone with bridges is double checking their code right now to make th sure this thing doesn't happen. But we'll start there. Tell us actually what happened. This thing is called Wormhole on Solana, I believe. Give us the scoop here, David. Yeah, so uh, this everyone's attention got raised when Sam Z Sun, who's a famous white hat hacker who can like almost uh, like fix any exploit before everyone knows about it, uh, tweeted out that Wormhole is not having a good time. Uh, and it turns out by the time Sam paid attention to it, uh, it had already it had already happened. Uh, so the Wormhole Network, which is a, a Ethereum to Solana bridge that lets you uh, wrap up your Ether on Ethereum, put that Ether into a smart contract on Ethereum, and then that smart contract pings another smart contract on Solana to tell the Solana chain that some Ether just got deposited into it and they can mint new Ether, fake Ether, wrapped Ether, Solana Ether on the Solana chain. Uh, and the reason why that will have value is because you can go back and forth and that's how bridges work. Uh, what happened allegedly uh, from what we are uh, understanding from all the people that know how to code and uncover these things is that the smart contract on the Solana side had an exploit that allowed the exploiter to mint uh, a bunch of Solana Ether, a, a bunch of IOUs for Ether on the Ethereum chain. That was And, and so they just minted new ones uh, kind of in the, in the same way that Federal Reserve prints new money. If you can get a hold of the money printer, you can print a bunch of new monies, but that doesn't mean that there's actually more Ether backing it on the Ethereum chain. So the exploiter minted a bunch of Solana Ether and then sent that Solana Ether back through the bridge so that they could take the Ether on the Ethereum side out of the, of, out of the wormhole smart contract. And that came out to a tune of 120,000 wrapped Ether. Uh, and then that 120,000 wrapped ether is now in the exploiter's wallet. And I don't know if they're actually washing it through Tornado Cash yet, um, uh, but I would imagine that's just kind of the only way that they can get that value cleaned. Um, this happened, as we're recording it, this happened, I don't know, 12 hours before mm -hmm. we're recording this, maybe mm -hmm. maybe a bit more. So this story, this story and what's happening is kind of still developing as we're doing it. But yeah, exactly what you said, right? So you've got these fake IOUs on Solana, and then the hacker just caches these IOUs for real ETH on the Ethereum side of things. But this causes some downstream effects, right. doesn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. What are the downstream effects, a cascade of effects when something like this happens? Right, so Ether is fantastic collateral. Uh, and so is used as collateral and liquidity inside of Solana DeFi. Uh, and so all of a sudden the Ether collateral in these DeFi applications, uh, like providing liquidity to other tokens, uh, becomes unbacked. Uh, and so it kind of goes from like an IOU to Ether to an IOU of nothing. Uh, and so all of a sudden, like the value in these things just evaporates, right? Because it's, it's like if somebody, if somebody like stole all the gold out of a bank that had issued IOUs against that gold. Well, if there's no gold there, like you can't issue any IOUs for it or the IOUs that you do have are worthless. Uh, and so it has cas cascading uh, impacts on DeFi. Liquidations happen because if... Um, value of the collateral goes to zero, then like people need to get liquidated. But also, how can you liquidate anything if there, there's no actual value there? Like you, the IOUs aren't worth anything. And so it really just, it just messes up everything. It's a, it's a systemic risk to have uh, all of this unbacked collateral in, in, in Solana DeFi. 
Uh, and so, like, uh, this is exactly this is, uh, what Giorgios Constantinopoulos from Paradigm says. Domino effect of now under collater- uncollateralized loans against wormhole ETH is severely undermentioned. That was yesterday. Uh, this has been fixed, actually, uh, as of, like, literally one or two hours before recording. Uh, somebody, uh, we think Jump Capital, has foot, footed the bill. Footed? Uh, footed? Footed? Footed the bill. Uh, I have a hundred... Foot the... Bill. Foot the they, <laughs> They coughed up in all the ether. And so now the wormhole bridge is actually whole again because uh, we think Jump Capital coughed up. Is it Jump a, Capital? I think so. That's what everyone's... Because that's ru- still uh, developing, right? That's, that's unconfirmed, but that's, that's kind of the only people that we can really consider to have this much money. $250 million? Just like, okay, here, like we'll, we'll make wormhole whole again. Uh, absolutely crazy. Um, yeah, so the, so it basically, we had all of these uh, IOUs that were minted. This causes a cascade of problems everywhere this wrapped Ether on Solana and the Solana DeFi ecosystem is used, right? Because now all of these assets that you thought were backed by ETH are no longer backed, right? And so it's a, a lot of problems. All of the while, Wormhole is saying, hey, look, guys, we got this. Mm-hmm. You know, like they were tweeting out, we're, we're finding a way to restore funds. In the background, they were negotiating with the hacker, I believe, Mm -hmm. and they sent messages to the hacker saying, hey, if you just return the funds, we'll give you $10 million, you'll be a white hat, Mm -hmm. right? You'll be helping us out for the $10 million bug bounty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and who knows, there's probably lots of other conversations that we're not not privy to, right? And so, um, but now what's just developed, it seems like, and what you're saying, David, is uh, Wormhole is back up they somehow procured the funds. Amazing. And you think it was, this was from uh, Jump Capital that's what, that that's funded what, this? Yeah, so Jeff Garzik asked that question, where, uh, where do the f- uh, funds to refill the bridge come from? Uh, and so if you click on that tweet and then scroll down, you'll see a lot of speculation that it's, it was Jump Capital. Um, Kyle Jump Shimani says, Capital? J- Jump is covering because they believe in the future of crypto and what they're bu- uh, building. So Jump Capital, I think, maybe had some, like, um, maybe were there investors in Wormhole or, or something like that. Um, Jump Capital is a, it's a trading desk, I think, and they just print money from doing trading stuff. Uh, so they're very well capitalized, obviously. But I mean, they could I, pay for this if they wanted to. At the end of the day, two hundred fifty million dollars is nothing. I'm sorry. Even uh, George Soros will will notice two hundred fifty million dollars missing <laughs> from his treasury. I think. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Um, you know, I guess I guess so. That you know, what do we learn? From this episode here, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I there's maybe some lessons that are starting to emerge. Uh, I feel like the the first thing we're learning is that bridges are dangerous. Bridges are dangerous, um, and they're dangerous. They're dangerous in two ways. They're dangerous in one: the smart contract code for a bridge can actually be hacked. And that's what happened here. There's a smart contract code hack. Which it happened which, on the Solana side. Which Ryan is is differentiating from the bridge. It's like. So yeah, you have the you have the bridge that spans two endpoints, two structures, and the bridge can break and be broken in the middle, or the two structures on the end can also break, and those are the smart contracts on either side of the bridge. So the bridge was fine because even the, even the exploiter was able to transfer assets across the bridge. It was the entryways of the bridge that got exploited here, and these are each individually uh, weak points. And we've seen hacks like this, not for a bridge, but like this in DeFi uh, many different times, right? You know, the, the famous parody multi-sig hack mm-hmm. is, you know, smart contract code that was basically right. hacked. So that's the first category. The other category that we haven't yet seen, but Vitalik has been talking about um, for, for a while, and particularly for the last month, is economic attacks. Mm. So this is like you're sort of dependent on the multi-sig signers or you're dependent on the security of... Um, you know, the, the Solana chain or any side chain to actually secure this bridge. And that's another iceberg, I think, under the water a little bit that people aren't seeing. Um, you know, for, from my perspective, it's good that people are paying more attention to bridge security. So there is a, uh, I guess, a, a sunny side mm-hmm. at the like uh, at the other side of this. Um, I think it's important to note that both layer ones like this bridge layer ones like this and layer two bridges can have the smart contract vulnerability Mm -hmm. though they probably don't layer twos don't have the same economic attack uh surface area that these layer one bridges have so i'm I'm happy to see that bridge security is coming into focus it seems like it's good that there's a happy ending where maybe a big uh, capital provider like jump is um reimbursing all funds um I do think that 
look, this bridge was talked about as if it was you know, safe mm-hmm. and secure. And I think a lot of people thought it was safe and secure. And I think there is some troubling, I guess, market pressure for everyone to say their bridge is secure when it's really not. And that is troubling. And I hope we, we, we see the lessons of, of, of security from this and we take those lessons and we apply them and we um, look at these bridges with a lot more scrutiny moving forward. What do you think the takeaways are, David? My, my, the biggest thing I'm surprised about is I had no idea how much Ether was on Solana via this wormhole. Like a quarter billion dollars is a lot. Over 100,000 100, units of Ether is a lot. Reminder, there's 118 million uh, Ether in existence. A lot of that's locked. Uh, a lot of that is lost. So maybe, maybe like, you know, 10 to 15 million of that is, is actually lost somehow, somewhere. Um, but like a hundred, over 100,000 Ether is a lot. Like that is not trivial. Um, and so that, that's what I'm surprised about. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that a bridge in such a nascent part of bridging's like story with crypto had that much ether wrapped up in his contracts. Um, and it, go, it also like whenever, um, Solana goes down, like, uh, we have Kyle Samani and Anatoly come out and say like a mainnet beta Solana is in mainnet beta. Like, you know, we, we're, we got DDoS, it's going down. I'm sorry, what kind of mainnet beta has a quarter billion dollars of value in it? Like, th- we, need to pick, we need to pick a lane, guys. Uh, is, this, is this a beta or is this a live ecosystem? Because if people are getting liquidated, it's not really a beta. Um, they, they are very, very, the whole Solana ecosystem is very, very fortunate that Jump has the means and the reason and the ability to actually cover the losses here. Um, Part of me wonder if we, we get the wrong lesson out of this as well. Like, I'm glad that... Um, users are going to be made whole for this. I think that's a great thing, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy individually. But I feel like it's a dangerous precedent for bridge users to expect that any hack or economic attack is going to get bailed out in the future. Because just because this ended with a happy ending doesn't mean the next one will. You know, there's not necessarily a jump capital who's going to like step in and reimburse everyone. Um, and so, especially when these bridges and layer twos and uh, everything decentralize, like there's yes. not, there's supposed to be no one there. Exactly. So there's, there's some brittleness in this structure that we're building in particular in the bridging structure. I think we talked a lot about this with Rune Christensen on the episode that we did with him. Uh, so go check that out. That's somewhere in the archives as well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, bridges are going to be a main topic of discussion. This won't be the last hack that we see of 2022, sadly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna continue talking about it. Um, so, um, what is this exploiter gonna do with all the money? <laughs> what what does one do with 250 with million dollars? What would you that, do? Well, okay, so they can't touch USDC. They can't d- touch USDT. It'll get frozen because it'll get frozen. So like th- they frozen. can touch die if they want. You're going straight to ETH. Yeah, they're, and then they're you're staying, going to Tornado staying, Cash. You're going to, yeah, right. But like you can't, you can't just wash a hundred thousand e- units of ether through Tornado Cash. Like yeah. you can maybe do like a couple hundred ETH a week, but like if you you have to pull it out into different wallets, you can't because. But then also like sure you if, can you can start to liquidate like uh, the, the the trickle of ETH that you push through Tornado Cash. So yeah. You, you hack, you exploit something for a quarter billion dollars, and then maybe over the course of one year, you can discreetly withdraw $1 million across, like, just, you know, spreading it out and obfuscating. And you just wait a long time. Yeah, exactly. Just wait a long time. But, like, what the hell do you do with the remaining $249 you just, million? Dollars? You just keep it neat. You take out some loans, use it in DeFi. I don't know. That's an option. To, to do what? You can't do it. Where is it? It's stuck there. It, yeah, I, I guess it is. Although, like, I think a lot more will be built. Like, you could just um, expect that there'll be more privacy-preserving right. solutions in the future, more off-ramps, this You're sort of thing. Sit or on you your just, hands, and so you can get you your stake. money later. Like, some if, more if, if they're, if they're <laughs> inside of the United States, like, are they where are they gonna? How are they gonna tell the IRS that where they got their quarter billion dollars from? <laughs> oh, I don't. It, I, it's very. Diff, it's going to be very difficult for them to exit. That's why, if I am the hacker, mm-hmm. I'm pr- like I'd be pretty tempted to be like, oh, okay, yeah, uh, no, this just a prank, guys. Look, I'm a white hat. <laughs> it's just a prank. I'm, it's, I'm a white hat because they because they know, offered the exploiter exploit. ten million dollars. Yeah, I'll take right? the ten million, free and clear. Right. And but I'll, although I do wonder, is that really free and clear? Yeah. If you go, you hack something. Can you just be like, yeah. 
Yeah, just, can, can yeah. you like remove yourself from all like courts and liabilities? Yeah, just by just taking the ten million dollar bribe to give it all back. Yeah, or maybe maybe you're supposed to play coy and pretend that you were just a white hat all along. Maybe that's the way to do it, and maybe that makes it free and clear. I don't know. Look, I'd I'm not a hacker. Okay, happen. David. <laughs> do you want to interview a hacker on yeah, Bankless? Yeah, yo, if a hacker wants to come on Bankless, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I will throw you a Zoom link. <laughs> we were just curious. We're just curious. Any, uh, any your, hackers out what, there? What are you going to do with the money? That's all I want to know. That's you just want to know what you're going to do with the money. Yeah, uh, DM me. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, head over to Bankless HQ right now to develop your crypto investing skills and learn how to free yourself from banks and gain your financial independence. We recommend joining our daily newsletter, podcast, and community as a Bankless Premium subscriber to get the most out of your Bankless experience. You'll get access to our market analysis, our alpha leaks, and exclusive content, and even the Bankless token for airdrops, raffles, and unlocks. If you're interested in crypto, the Bankless community is where you want to be. Click the link in the description to become a Bankless Premium subscriber today. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for in-depth interviews with industry leaders, Ask Me Anything, and weekly roll-ups where we summarize the week in crypto and other fantastic content. Thanks everyone for watching and being on the journey as we build out the Bankless Nation.